True crime abductions involving children are sadly all too common across the United States. Kids are abducted or wander off all the time. However, the murder case of Audrey Cunningham shows just how horrifically brutal these stories can get. Today's video takes us along the timeline from the news of her disappearance and discovery to the case against her apparent killer. You'll learn more about the true nature of the friend that killed her. Let us know what you think of this case below. Do you think this was an accident waiting to happen based on the killer's previous history, or was this a tragic crime of passion? A family in Texas recently went through every parent's worst nightmare as their young daughter failed to come home from school. She left the house in the morning and vanished. It seems like every inn that we search, it, it just ends with empty hands so far. And I just, I want my baby returned. There's not words for it. There's not one feeling you feel is a roller coaster. This is the stuff that you see on TV and you wonder, uh, you can only imagine what uh, the, the family and the parents are going through. She has so many opportunities ahead of her and she deserves every right to be able <laughs> to reach those opportunities. The local community carried out a gut-wrenching search operation with everyone combing the area and knocking on doors. Days later, the police found the girl's body and quickly concluded she'd been murdered. Now, one of those community members faces life in prison, or worse, for deliberately killing that child. Your help has been immensely appreciated. It has been, it has been great. I want to thank again everyone who has been engaged in the efforts to find Audrey, from the investigators to the volunteers who have, who have spent countless hours in hopes of finding her, and to the community members who have been, been here supporting us since day one. I also want to have a, say thank you to Trinity River Authority for lowering the water levels so that the divers could reach the area, could reach areas of, of interest. At, but at this time, I sadly announced that Audrey's body was located at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. Today's video focuses on the escalating murder investigation of Audrey Cunningham. We start with the initial Amber Alert when the 11-year-old disappeared. We'll then look at what we know happened to her the day she vanished, and everything we've learned about the man in custody. We need to put out a bit of a warning on this one because some of the details of this case are hard to comprehend. You won't believe what the suspect did to this young girl after killing her and how they found her. Keep watching to uncover the horrifying past of this so-called family friend and all the red flags that should have kept him far away from their home. He should have been in prison, but was instead free to live on their property. Let's start with the moment they declared Audrey missing. The Audrey Cunningham missing persons case. Audrey's morning routine on a school day was pretty straightforward. She would get up early for school, head out to the nearest bus stop, and then take the bus to school with her friends. On the morning she disappeared, Audrey appeared happy and eager to go to school. Yet, she never made it onto the bus. There are conflicting reports about when the family officially declared Audrey missing. Some say the parents contacted the police when she failed to return home from school, and others say they were alerted when Audrey didn't appear at school. A local couple say they were suspicious that something was wrong when Audrey didn't go past their home. She always made a point of making a fuss of their dogs whenever she could. Either way, it was clear that something had happened to the young girl on her way to school. The cops set up an Amber Alert to inform everyone in the area about the disappearance. They knew they needed all eyes looking out for her and checking for any suspicious behavior. It wasn't long before most of the community was out looking for her. Some immediately went out into the woods close to Audrey's home. She loved to spend her free time out there, visiting the animals and appreciating nature. Maybe she'd taken a wrong turn out there instead of going to school? Maybe she'd fled into the woods to escape from whoever may have tried to take her on the way to school? Authorities quickly feared the worst when they found a backpack near the dam in the Trinity River. It was bright red and resembled the Hello Kitty one she had worn to school. It now seemed as though Audrey had entered the river somehow and ended up swept away. Later reports confirmed they found other items belonging to her in the water too. The search team made the decision to work with water management authorities to alter the flow of water in the Lake Livingston Reservoir to reduce the water level in the river and make it easier to search the area. 
The Trinity River Authority, um, the sheriff mentioned that they were able to work with them to reduce the flow of the water in the river. And once that water was lower, they were able to locate Audrey Cunningham, 11 year old body. The team found her remains on Tuesday, February 20th, days after her disappearance. This story quickly changed from a simple missing persons case to a murder investigation because of one horrific detail. Subscribers will know that we don't hold back on this channel, so be warned that there are some grim details to come in this video. If you aren't yet subscribed, don't forget to hit that button to get more of these true crime stories. The murder of Audrey Cunningham. It was clear that Audrey hadn't simply fallen into the river by accident when they discovered her body. There was a rock tied to her via a rope. This heavyweight would have pulled her under and ensured she wasn't seen again. Whoever tied it to her was intent on killing her and presumably hoped the river would wash away any evidence. The autopsy report from the Harris County Medical Examiner shows that Audrey died from homicidal violence including blunt head trauma. The word including is especially chilling here. It suggests that this wasn't just a single attack to the head, although that may have been the fatal blow. Still. There is something barbaric about going to these lengths to inflict harm and suffering. It all seems so cruel and pointless. If she was alive and awake at the time, why put her through that trauma? If he knocked her out, why use the rock to dispose of her? It also shows a level of premeditation. It wasn't just a case of someone picking up a rock from the side of the road and striking her with a fatal blow. They had the rope and the thought to tie it to her body. So. We know without a shadow of a doubt that this is murder, and we know enough about the cause of death to explain how she died. The next question is who did it? There is one prime suspect in custody right now, and when you see the criminal record, you'll wonder why he wasn't already in jail. The prime suspect, Don Stephen McDougall. So, let's talk a little more about the prime suspect in this investigation. The police are only interested in one person for the murder of Audrey Cunningham. Don Stephen McDougall had the opportunity and the means. There is also a long string of convictions in his past. McDougall has been charged with an impressive array of offenses over his adult life. There isn't a clear pattern to his behavior, other than he appears to be a very troubled and aggressive individual. There are some vehicle-related crimes, including unauthorized use of a vehicle and a DWI. There are also some drug and deadly weapon charges in there. The most recent was a conviction for harassment in 2020, which landed him in prison for a week. The most alarming is a charge of enticement of a child. The details aren't clear on this one in terms of the intent at the time of the enticement and the damage inflicted on the family. Still, it shows that McDougal has the mentality to endanger children. This is clearly a man who should be behind bars for the safety of the community based on his previous crimes. There are also questions over whether he should be on the sex offender register after the previous incident involving a child in 2007. Yet he was free to live and work near children in the area. What makes this case even more shocking with the hindsight of this information is that A. McDougal was part of the search party looking out for Audrey. B. He lived on the family's property and had a relationship with her. We'll talk more about family connections in a moment. For now, let's look at the search effort. There was a large search party operation once the authorities declared Audrey missing. Family and friends knocked on doors, desperate for information and to spread the word. McDougal was one of those concerned friends who joined the search efforts. Locals and the police saw him actively asking local residents what they knew. However, some felt that he wasn't being genuine. Suspicion over his behavior at the time put him in the firing line and the police began to question his whereabouts on the day. At the time, McDougal maintained his innocence, but it became clear that he was trying to cover his back by pretending to look for Audrey. Why was McDougal so close to the Cunninghams? Don Stephen McDougal was the last person known to see Audrey alive. This was because he was the one entrusted with the role of taking her to the bus stop to catch the school bus. He was a family friend who would help out and was apparently friendly with the children. It appears that all had been fine between them all for a while, and the parents had no reason to suspect that he would ever harm their child. Sadly, it seems that McDougal took his time building that relationship until he could finally take advantage of it. 
McDougal had every opportunity to get to know the family, build trust with them, and watch their movements and behavior patterns. He was more than just a friend. He lived in a trailer on the family's property. Most parents watching this will be understandably appalled that McDougal was so close to those children. It is one thing to say that they weren't fully aware of what he had done, or that they felt he wasn't a threat. It's another to ignore the swastika tattoo on his shoulder. The police have since confirmed that McDougal was a neo-Nazi with ties to the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. They are a white supremacist hate group with a violent reputation. Reading through his convictions and knowing he has that on his body, it's clear the man is rotten to the core. Yet the Cunninghams insisted they knew he had a background, but not that there were possible links to sexual offenses involving children. The case against Don Stephen McDougal. Right now, McDougal faces a capital murder charge and is in jail held without bond. There are no further charges right now regarding any further indecency or crimes against Audrey. Naturally, we can't help but wonder if there was more to this than a desire to kill following the previous charge of trying to entice a child. However, there are no reports on the condition of Audrey's body following the discovery. There is also no charge of kidnapping or enticement because Audrey was in his care that morning. If we focus purely on the murder charge and the case for his prosecution, it looks as though the police definitely have their man. He was the last person with Audrey when she disappeared, and there is evidence tying him to the scene and apparent murder weapon. The police have located enough data and video evidence to place McDougal at the scene of the crime. Cell phone data puts him in three locations close to the Trinity River. They do not line up with his statement and suggest that he most likely took Audrey there that morning and dumped at her body. There is also the fact that the police found some rope in his car that matches the type tied to the rock and Audrey's body. A defense team may argue that it's just a simple piece of rope that anyone could have in their truck. Still, it makes more sense that it is from the same length used in the murder. It is also surprisingly careless of him not to throw the rope away. This seems like a pretty open and shut case right now. However, there is one aspect yet to answer. McDougal had the means and the opportunity to kill Audrey, and it appears as though that is exactly what happened. What's missing is the motive. Why did he kill a young girl that he was apparently on good terms with? The family trusted him to drive her to the bus stop, and he had done so in the past. So, what changed for him to decide to kill her? The use of the rope and rock makes it clear this wasn't a sudden crime of passion. It is highly unlikely that he lashed out at Audrey during the ride to the bus stop and then covered up his crimes. It seems as though this was intentional. So, had he been waiting for the right opportunity and biding his time after building a relationship with the family? Did he have other sinister ideas in mind because he'd built that close relationship with Audrey? Right now, this is all speculation. The sad fact is that we may never know exactly what happened between Audrey leaving the property in the car and ending up in the Trini River. What we can hope for is that justice is served and McDougal receives a life sentence for what he did. We got uh, Steve McDougal, Don McDougal. We're going to get him out to get a ring. Steve, come on. Dang. JP wants to talk to you. Where's your Hold on. I well, put your smock on for no now. Well, you come on out here. I... Well, no, 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 man. You come no on, dress. man. Don't disrespect me like I that. No All right, well, wrap up in that. Wrap up in the blanket. Come on. Come on. Go back to bed. Steve, come on. Let her I'll run you real quick. Come on. Huh? Well, you got to get up and sign some paperwork. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wrap up for me. Appreciate you. McDougal, I'm Judge Richardson. I'm going to read your rights and we're going to talk about your charge today. You have the right to remain silent and not make any statement at all. I know that any statement that you make can will be used against you at trial and court. You have the right to have an attorney present to advise, her, to advise you prior to or during any questioning. If you can't afford one, you do have the right to have an attorney present to advise you prior to or during any questioning. You have the right to terminate any interview at any time and you have the right to any time you're trying to be accused of a felony. Do you understand your rights, Mr. McDougal? Do you want a court appointed attorney or you're going to hire your own? No. Which one? I don't have You're going to hire your own? Yep. Okay. All right. All I need you to do is sign right here for me. Your charge is capital murder and it's a no bond. Okay, thank you. Okay.
A defense team may try to prove his innocence or some form of diminished responsibility at the trial, but it is hard to argue against the evidence. Justice for Audrey Cunningham. There is a lot to unpack in this case, and it seems as though we are only scratching the surface. There are sure to be many more details that unfold once this case goes to trial. What we do know is quite simple. An 11-year-old girl went missing on her way home from school, and it didn't take long for her community to rally together to find her. Sadly, it seems that one of the men who walked among them was ultimately responsible for her death. He was a part of her everyday life and a friend to the family. Then, for reasons as yet unknown, he took her away, killed her, and threw her into the river. It seems pretty certain that McDougal will face life in prison, at the very least, for this murder. It is also hard to pin this on anybody else, given everything that we know about him. We still want to know your views on this story in the comment section below. Do you think this is a case of an accident waiting to happen considering all we know about McDougal's past? Will this end up being something he'd been planning for a long time? Or did he originally intend to take Audrey to school, but then something snapped along the way? Was this actually an unintentional crime of passion after all? Thank you for sticking through to the end with this one. Child true crime abductions are always tough, and this one feels particularly brutal with the nature of the murder and discovery of the body. We'll definitely be keeping track of news developments on this heartbreaking investigation. In the meantime, don't forget to like and share this video, and we'll see you again soon with another one.